So yeah, this was uh, one of my very early custom figures, if it's not really obvious. I mean, I was never great at custom figures, but this wasn't the best by far. Even if you take the face off, it's just the face of the wrestling figure underneath. <laughs> it's pretty lame. I think it's all done with, um, what was that stuff called? Mighty Putty? I think that's when the body was sculpted out of. It was pretty bad. But this here is the new NECA Roy figure. I think some of the last releases kind of came out in a weird way with NECA. So I don't know if this is technically the last Jason figure they put out, but it's the last one I've picked up. And basically because of all the uh, rights issues going on, lawsuit and everything with Friday the 13th. We're not going to be getting any more new figures anytime soon. So it's kind of a good time to take a look at the collection as a whole, see what we have, see what we don't have, and kind of go from there. My shelf is pretty messy right now. Everybody's kind of piled in the back and I need to spread them out a little more evenly. These diorama bits are cool, but they actually kind of make putting the figures in a little difficult. And I think I spent more time working on getting the diorama pieces in place than anything else. So I guess we can go chronologically. We got Pamela Voorhees back there. So this figure came out in a two pack, I believe only years and years ago, back when the original part two Jason came out. And yeah, she's definitely one that needs an update. She has that very old style neck articulation where she just kind of has like shoulders, wrists, head, her legs are static, all that stuff. Mine was used. So I I didn't really get any accessories with her, so I don't even have her knife or anything. Uh, this would have been a cool one to redo. Up here is the newer release, the Part 2 Jason. So this one is, it was a little disappointing for me. This is the same with a lot of these more recent NECA Ultimate Jasons. It's very clear that they used the exact same parts off of the old Cold Classics figures, and then maybe just did some slight retooling to parts to give him more articulation. So while he does have like bendable elbows and bendable knees and that kind of stuff going on now, the head sculpt is exactly the same. A lot of the details on him is exactly the same. And to me, that was a bit disappointing. Back here we got the part three, which is fine. NECA re-released these things a lot, which is their MO, but like this guy, they sold individually carded as a regular and battle damage version, but then they put out an ultimate version. I'm not even sure which version I have sitting here on the dock. I'd have to look back at the other ones to tell you offhand, but yeah, and it's a decent figure. It does what he needs to do. Down here we got my part four and yeah, I just opted to go with him in this pose with his head stuck on the machete just to give him a little different look than the other Jasons in the cabinet. I may change that just because he takes up a lot of room laying down. Another one of the early Ultimates from NECA. It's a decent figure as well. So part five, Roy. I love this thing. This is great, actually. Now I did buy him like the day after getting the part two Michael Myers figure. So I did kind of feel like I was buying the same figure twice in a row because it's basically a very similar jumpsuit body underneath, same articulation and all that. But the detail on him is really good. I love the head sculpt. I love the mask. Came with a good array of weapons. He's got that gash in his chest. I was pretty happy with this release. If NECA is going out on this one, like I said, I'm not really sure if it's technically the last release of the series before the lawsuit settled but this is the last one I picked up and it's going out on a high note. So we got part six. I got him here on the display stand from the diorama kit and uh, this is a cool figure in terms of looks but I really wish it would have come with more hands. It's a common complaint with all of these. A lot of them did not have hand options I would have liked especially on here. He has like clenched fists while floating underwater. It just kind of looks weird. And uh, this thing notoriously had bad leg joints. I know they reissued it. I don't know if they ever fixed that, but uh, this guy's hard to stand on his own. Part seven, this is another cult classics. This was a holy grail for me for quite a long time back when I first started collecting horror stuff. But as time went on, this figure kind of became a point of contention with me. He is way bigger than any of the other Jasons. If you look at him from any angle, he's just massive and he's not very well detailed, not very well articulated. And for years on Twitter, NECA would claim we don't need to do another part seven. We already did one. 
and uh, screw you, Randy. This thing was never up to par, and it really should have been done, but they never redid a Kane Hodder Jason, which is incredibly lame. So, there's no Part 8. Once again, no Kane Hodder. Nobody's ever done an official Part 8 figure. I had a custom, and I think I sold it. So then, finally going to a Mezco figure. We got the Jason Goes to Hell Mezco. This one's decent for what it is. Mezco's always stylized, so it's never really quite perfect, but I think it does okay. It's not my favorite Jason look, so I'm not as concerned about it. Jason X, I would have loved to have a pre-Uber Jason version as well, but this is the old McFarlane Movie Maniacs one, and uh, yeah, another one we really need an update on. This figure's okay, but definitely a sign of its time, and uh, yeah, I really wish you would have gotten an update on that as well. Freddy vs. Jason, very similar to the part two, just a lot of retooling of a figure that already existed. I do like the new scratched up mask they gave him, but they gave him the stupid teddy bear. I really wish they would have given him the Freddy head that you see at the end of the movie, or something like that. The original one came with that Freddy head. I just kind of think this thing was a little lame. And then finally we got the remake. Same story with the Freddy vs. Jason. They just retooled that old existing figure, and uh, some of the flaws with that thing are just still present here. If you take the mask off, which I'm not going to do because he's going to go toppling over, but like the hair looks really awkward coming out of the head. The original one, the hair was attached to the mask, and then they finally attached it to the head on this one, but it's still like very clearly just glued on, and some is sculpted to the head and some isn't. They really need to just redo this thing fully, and they were lazy and didn't do that. Time for another unboxing, and this box looks a little small to hold what it's supposed to hold, but let's find out. I guess it makes sense, it is supposed to be a child's mask. It's been the card to hell and back, but it is the Halloween Trick or Treat Studios Young Michael Myers mask. It's actually really nice. I, I don't know why I was expecting it to be crummier quality than this, but it looks pretty good. I mean, the paint's a little sloppy, but if we're trying to be like a vintage clown mask that may actually just be intentional. The sculpt on it looks pretty good. The size on it feels about what it should be for a child's mask. I'm glad it is like a child's mask. They didn't like upsize it to be an adult size. It's got the white elastic. It's got the little missing section here on the sides like that actual mask had. It's pretty cool. That's uh, I've been needing this in my collection for a long time and I'm glad to finally have one. So I gave in and picked this guy up from Spirit Halloween. This is the animatronic Sam. Had a coupon for him, so I got him for a decent price. And yeah, I'm gonna make some modifications to this as time goes on. This is just the standard version of him. He has kind of a, like a metal frame inside here that gives him form. And I would like to replace that with a mannequin body or something that was posable. So he's got the one hand down here that has the bag and the other hand at this awkward angle. I did give him the Trick or Treat Studios version of the lollipop. He came with the spirit version and I just swapped it out. He holds it just fine. I think I had to make the hole a little bigger in his hand to hold that thing. But when he's motorized, this will kind of go up and down and he'll play his theme song basically and uh yeah i think he's pretty cool but i just really want him to be a more prop replica e i think it's not really prop replica but just a one-to-one -one figure versus being an animatronic that's kind of awkwardly posed the head also does come off as you can see down there he has his unmasked head so it's just a pipe in the middle here that you slide uh, a stick onto depending on which head you want probably going to keep him with the bag head most of the time i was kind of hoping that they had figured out a way to put this over the other head and that you could actually like maybe make the cut and have the the mouth hanging out or something i thought that could have been cool but no such luck and uh yeah it's a box full of uh goodies from fright rags this time and this top piece is not mine so they had a bundle where you can get a shirt with uh same artwork basically with the lunchbox and i think you can only get them together and uh, my friend wanted just the lunchbox i wanted the shirt so we decided to go and split the package so uh, yeah this is his and the rest is mine so the reason i got mine so late is uh basically the sam socks they were everything else while i was in stock but these were a pre-order so i got my trick-or-treat sam socks blair witch socks I needed new socks. This was a good excuse. Pet Cemetery socks and uh, Cult of Thorn socks. And then I also picked up the Hammer shirt. I wanted to pick this up a while ago, but it was out of stock in my size. So when they restocked, this was a good reason to get this guy here. And I guess the rest of it was inside the lunchbox. So I got a blind box Ghostbusters pin. We'll open that up in a second. Got a sucker or lollipop or whatever. So here's the actual shirt, same artwork as the lunchbox. And then, ooh, they're not in a pack. They're just loose cards this time and stickers. So Sam, 
card. I think I might already have this guy. And then I believe I don't have this one, so i uh, find a good use for this sticker. Okay, I'll see what I could do one-handed. So uh, I got the shrink wrap off of the blind box. So kind of the, the logo side with the different pins over here. It looks like you could open it up with the little tab. Then we have some Ghostbusters like decals make it look like the Ghostbuster traps. We have the danger sticker on the back. A little side panel, front panel. It's a little weird, but it's got the Fright Rags logo on it. And then we got the other side panel. And then the uh, the top. Okay, so I can't open this with one hand like this, so give me a second. All right, so I kind of made a mess of the perforation there. I didn't really want to rip, but I got a Stay Puft pin. That's pretty cool. Not the one I would have wanted the most out of the set, but still a cool one, so I'm happy enough with that. I think if I was going to pick one, actually, it probably would have been the, either the Melted Stay Puft or the... Uh, Terror Dog probably would have been my first choices, but I think those are rarer anyway, so I'm happy enough with this. This is unboxing I've been waiting for for a little while now. This is the second year in a row I've gotten the, is it the Spook Bag, I think is what it's technically called, from Cavity Colors. This is a very limited item. They basically put it out for sale on their website, and there's a set number that are going to be available. They reveal a t-shirt that's in the bag, but nothing else. So you're mostly getting a blind buy item. And yeah, it just kind of comes down to what you get. Last year I did it. I really enjoyed it. I don't think I actually filmed it to be quite honest, but I definitely want to do it again this year. It's one of the few blind buy things that are available online that I'm actually totally on board with. So yeah, we're gonna pop this thing open. So I'm just gonna take the bag out real quick. We'll take a quick look at the t-shirt. Now this is not the same kind of shirt they had last year, but it's in a similar vein. Last year they did this Cavity Colors Goosebump inspired shirt. It was the Haunted Candy last year. Really cool shirt. I really dug it. And that was a separate buy, but they decided to include it with the Spook Bag this year. This is, it came from the cornfield, and I think it's equally badass to the Haunted Candy one. Okay, so that's literally all I know that I'm getting outside of the bag. So here we got Spook Bag, Cavity Colors Presents, Halloween 2019. The art on the bag alone is really cool. So let's dig right into it. <laughs> the first item in it is uh, one of those bonehead things. It looks like a sideshow Mel kind of deal going through your head. That's funny. And uh, Cavity Colors Beer Koozie, I guess. It's got a famous slashers, almost looking like mad balls on the back. It's really cool. What do you know? It works. Next up, uh, Ghost Poofs, Marshmallow Candy, Lollipop. Oh, bookmarks. This is a bookmark based on the shirt. That's pretty cool. It's a lot of candy in here. Uh, Lemonhead. Oh, that's awesome. A, uh, it's supposed to be Goosebumps. I don't know if it's specifically Goosebumps, but like a Night of the Living Dummy sticker. A uh, Jack Skellington patch. Michael Myers sticker that kind of matches. Oh, is that a, oh, it's a temporary tattoo, not a sticker. Huh, it's kind of cool. A worm, I think this might be gummy. Feels like it might be gummy. That's kind of gross. <laughs> it's the Goosebumps theme though, right? Go eat worms, gobstoppers, eyeball lollipop thing. Hey, candy corn. I was just watching the movie Candy Corn earlier today. Could have used some of these. Oh, another sticker. This is, I think it's their Carver series that they've done some stuff with. This is Michael Myers carving a pumpkin. The Halloween one pumpkin, specifically. Smarties. More Smarties. More Gobstoppers. I'm just trying to pull multiple things out now at once. Tootsie Roll. Another lemon head. Another Dum Dum. More Smarties. Dum Dums and Smarties, huh? Bottle caps. This really is like, you know, going trick-or-treating. You get a bunch of random candy. Another Dum Dum. Cavity Colors pen. Oh, that is cool looking. It's a uh, Silver Shamrock style Goosebumps keychain. That is cool. Horrific fortune cookie. It'd be cool if I had like the Rocco's Modern Life, like bad luck and extreme misfortune will infest your pathetic soul for all eternity. Tootsie Roll, Smarties, more Tootsie Rolls. Cavity Colors pin. Very cool. I think we're getting down to the very bottom of the bunch here. More candy. Why am I even showing it at this point? Then we got some little buttons here. So we got uh, another one of the Carver style ones. So David from Lost Boys, Wednesday Adams, Reagan there. Oh, awesome. The haunted mask one. It's great. And last but not least, the planet Earth giving you the middle finger as a sticker. 